Hi, this is Dave Thomas. Uh, I've been asked to introduce HTML form flow sheet uh, tomorrow uh, for OpenMRS University. Um, the date is November 30th, 2011. Um, and the main thing that I'm going to show with HTML form flow sheet is how you set up a role based home page that then links to um, very easy to configure clinical dashboards made up entirely of HTML forms. Um, this is something that I showed at the OpenMRS conference in Kigali about two months ago. Um, so to get started, what you need is the role-based homepage module, which you can download from openmrs.org uh, in the module repository. Uh, HTML form entry. Uh, here you'll see I have version 173.999. Um, I believe 174 will be coming out in a couple of days and that will be posted to the module repository also. So that's really what you want. And I have HTML form flow sheet version 1.2.2. Um, so to get started here, uh, the role-based home page is a module that allows you to assign a home page, which is where you go when you click home up here. Um, based on the role of the user who's logged in. And so I have created a home page for the sysdev uh, role here. Um, in terms of how you would use this clinically, what I would do is I would go under administration, manage roles, and what you can do is create different roles for um, different doctors who provide different services. And you can bundle, you know, an NCD doctor, an HIV doc, uh, TB, doc um, and various other roles and, e and what you can do then is that when anyone who's assigned those roles log in they basically see a different OpenMRS application on their home page. So for role based home pages for my sysdev role. Um, so the way that this works uh, and this is an extremely powerful and simple tool here is that this large box is essentially a JSP. Um, everything that will work in a JSP um, as if you were writing a module or working on the graphical interface for OpenMRS Core will work here. Um, I believe that jQuery is exposed to this for example so if you wanted to do a lot of fancy JavaScript you could do that as well. Um, but here, there's a lot of stuff in here, but most of it is just an explanation, which I'm because I've been getting ready to post this to the wiki page uh, for HTML form flow sheet. But really, the only thing that's happening is that I've specified a portlet, and it's the HTML form flow sheet find patient portlet. Um, and so, as a sysdev, which is how I'm logged in now um, on my personal laptop. Um, when I click home, I'm going to see what gets rendered by specifying this portlet. And I will show you what this looks like right now. So this is what, what gets rendered. Um, this is just HTML that was at the very top of the role-based home page that I showed you. And then what gets rendered by the, the portlet that was specified are these two boxes. Um, I guess I'm going to go back for just a sec because there's a couple of parameters that you need to set in the portlet and I want to explain those really quickly. Um, the most important ones are the program equals five and six here. This basically says that this role should be able to see clinical dashboards for programs five and six, which in this case I think are asthma and diabetes. Um, these are taken from the Rinkwavu um, Partners in Health um, EMR. Um, this here is where you specify the form ID of a demographics form, um, which is used during the create patient routines. Um, and for the rest of these, you can basically read the wiki page. I'm not, I can't remember offhand what they actually do. Um, but I will have it fully documented by the time anyone sees this. Um, so basically what happens now that I've gone to my home page is I can say, okay, today all of my asthma patients are coming in. And I say restrict by program, yes. 
and I will look up uh, this John test patient. And here you have a complete um, asthma centric um, view of John test patient. And you have the demographics form, so if you wanted to do an edit of address, for example, you could do that here. This, by the way, is the, um, the tag that comes with the Rwanda address hierarchy module, which is specific to our Partners in Health implementation. It's also been handed off to the government there. The idea here is to have structured addresses um, because we want to be able to link patient data with um, the GIS addresses of the different villages, which are these guys here. Um, moving on, uh, we have an intake form. Um, this is the real uh, Partners in Health asthma intake form. It's kind of a monster. Um, this is also an, an HTML form, and it's just being rendered in um, view mode in the tab right now. If you wanted to edit, uh, you can just click Edit here. Uh, give it just a sec to render because it's, it's a large form. And now we can make any change that we want and send those changes in. Um, and then for the subsequent tabs, we get into the actual HTML form flow sheets. Um, this is a specific rendering um, type where um, every row in one of these tables represents uh, data entry of um, a, an HTML form of a specific form ID and these are basically the elements of the form. So, so each row corresponds to one small HTML form and I'll show you that here. Um, it's very simple, it's just this is basically the, the whole form. It's just these four items. Uh, I can choose a hospital and you'll see the difference here displayed. Um, so there's a couple of things going on and I want to explain what the mechanisms are for how this works. Uh, first of all, at its core, um, in its current incarnation, HTML form flow sheet works off of <coughs> a uh, URL that is associated with the program. Um, there is a lot of information in the HTML form flow sheet wiki about what these strings actually mean. Um, but they're fairly easy to parse once once you you uh, you learn what this is. So each tab that you see here is basically represented um, <coughs> uh, in between the pipes here. So each of these entries that I'm highlighting represents a different tab. Um, <coughs> there's only two types of tabs. One is specified with an S in the first. Um, first little digit here in between the colons and F here. Um, S stands for single um, and you'll see that S is used for demographics in the intake form. Um, this basically means that we only expect this form to be entered once per patient. So demographics should only happen once which is during the create patient um, step uh, and then uh, for any given clinical program, you would expect the intake form only to be filled out once uh, per program. Um, and then after that, where there can be multiple visits, that's where you specify F. Um, and that's why you see these different, all these different encounters rendered in a, in a vertical, vertical table. Um, <coughs> I guess uh, it's worth pointing out here that um, for the tabs, for the single tabs, uh, the ones that start with S, there's a fourth uh, parameter here which can be either first or last and that basically helps HTML form flow sheet decide which encounter to show if there are multiple form entries. So um, if this demographics form had been filled out a couple of times for the patient, uh, which, which doesn't really make sense, I guess the asthma intake would would make more sense, like maybe this was entered twice for some reason or it was data entry error or something like that. Um, you can say uh, I would like HTML form flow sheet to show either the 
the uh, the most current, which is what last means, or the other alternative would be first, which b would be which would tell HTML form flow sheet to show the earliest uh, form entry of of the single form. Um, just to show you how powerful this is, uh, I will add a regimen tab really quickly. Um, so what I want to do is a flow sheet, and I want to call it regimen. And I believe this is form 15. So that's all that it takes. And then I get this regimen tab here, and let me give it a second to render. And there you go. Uh, there's a couple of, of drug orders that correspond to the schema um, of this particular drug order. Um, form that I have. So these are the possible drugs that will render uh, and any match on those drugs becomes um, a row here in this table. Uh, so if you look at, at the URL string, there's a couple of diff little other things I want to point out. There's this t title parameter, asthma program. This is how this title ends up at the top of the um, patient chart. And then there's the show all inks with ink type. Uh, what this basically does is it adds this, this thing here to um, each of the flow sheets. Um, I guess different implementations can make a choice about how they want to handle um, each piece of data that's being entered. Right now, when you fill out an, an HTML form, you have to have an encounter um, associated with that form being entered. So we have here a bunch of different tabs where a single patient trip to a clinic could result in multiple rows being added to multiple ones of these tabs. And so um, rather than get lots of tiny encounters representing each row that you add, you have the option of, of either starting a new encounter here um, or if you want to append, for example, some diagnostics to encounter that already occurred uh, a couple of days ago, um, or actually, no, just now, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So um, let's say the test was done then, and rhinitis, save changes. Right, so we've added this here without creating a new encounter. So basically, you know, to, to, uh, to put this in easier to understand terms, the idea is that as you add rows to each of the tables in each of the tabs, you can use these rows to, to build a monthly encounter uh, or a weekly encounter and what the properties and observations contained in that encounter are. Um, if you don't like that idea and you really like keeping um, uh, the sort of one-to-one -one form entry to encounter model, then all you have to do is get rid of this, you despecify it, and that option will be gone. So if I look in all the flow sheets now, you'll see all I can do is add new rows, but I can't append to um, rows that are already uh, in the database. Um, so there's one more step for setting this up. Um, if you figured out what it was already, uh, you're probably an OpenMRS expert. Um, but the idea um, that I want to cover is how each of these programs gets mapped to um, a different set of, of, uh, of tabs. So here I go into the diabetes program. Um, I look up John Test Patient. And once again, we have a long string of form and tab configurations, but it's different um, than it was for the asthma program. Um, for example, you know, you'll notice here on the diabetes intake, uh, this actually is the diabetes intake form and not the asthma. Um, so I will show you how to do this. I'm going to switch over to Chrome because global properties load a lot faster than in, in my Firefox anyway. And here you have a global property called HTML form flow sheet program configuration map. And it has a particular syntax. And this will all be on the wiki by the time anybody sees this. Um, but what you're doing is essentially mapping program IDs, which is this five, to a configuration string. Um, 
So this is all the stuff for program ID equals five. And then I get about halfway and I write, and here's where program ID six starts. Um, so you have to keep this syntax um, in place, but I mean, hopefully it's fairly straightforward and there's documentation on this. Um, this global property is used uh, again, so that on my role-based home page, when I choose a program, um, HTML form flow sheet knows what t set of tab configurations um, to use. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, I'll show you really quickly what it's like to create a new patient. Let's say we're going to add a patient to the diabetes program. Uh, Dave test. Uh, Make up an ID, mail. This is this uh, address hierarchy tag coming from the Rwanda address hierarchy module. You'll notice that it, this check happens when we have a fully structured address. Pick Rinquavu. Hopefully this goes through. Right, so now we've gone through. Um, we create an encounter for the demographics. Add a phone number. We can do height, stuff like that. Right. Um, one other thing is that the demographics, oh sorry, and then so the next thing that we would do um, is to fill out the diabetes in intake form. And let's say enrolled on the 28th. Um, the code of this intake form has the enroll in, pro in program tag embedded in it. So by virtue of filling out this intake form, this patient will automatically be enrolled in the in the diabetes program. Um, just add some data. I guess it doesn't really matter. Enter the form. Hopefully I didn't miss anything that was required. Looks good. So now we have demographics. We're in the program. Um, and we can go ahead and start entering these various visits. Um, and so that's basically what the workflow is. Uh, in the future, I think that what I would like to do is to move the tab configuration into an actual data model. So there'll be some admin pages where you set this up. You won't be using the global property anymore. Um, and the other thing that I would like to do is to be able to include um, other items uh, in these tabs other than the two options that we have now, the, the single HTML form or the flow sheet rendering of the form. Uh, I would also very much like to include OpenMRS portlets and so you can take widgets off of the OpenMRS uh, default dashboard and have those actually sitting in, in tabs also. I think that that would um, greatly um, expand uh, this. Um, so that's it. Um, I think that this is adequate for uh, what I what I want to talk about. There's a couple of other things, such as how to embed um, HTML forms within HTML forms, but I'll leave that for a different talk, or maybe we can discuss after on the actual presentation um, of this. But um, and then if you have any questions, if anyone's watching this and has any questions, uh, first of all, kudos for having listened this far, and also. Um, other than the wiki, feel free to contact myself or anyone at PIH or anyone really uh, on both the OpenMRS dev list and on the implementers list both. Uh, you can find information those on, on openmrs.org. Okay, so signing off. Um, I hope this renders. Thanks for listening. Bye.